Ukraine begins hunt for Russian glide bombs. Armed forces of country use the tactics of preventive strikes. Ukraine seems to have begun the hunt for warehouses with Russian winged glide bombs, which have become a real headache for the Ukrainian armed forces in recent months. Business Insider writes about this, analyzing the latest drone strikes on Russian territory. The publication notes that gliding bombs are extremely difficult to intercept in flight and they are dropped from aircraft far beyond the range of Ukrainian air defense systems. Therefore, to counter this threat, it is necessary to hit planes at airfields or directly at bomb depots. This is likely what happened last Saturday when dozens of kamikaze drones struck the Kuchayovskaya airfield where Russian Su-34 and Su-35 fighters are based which are used daily to carry out attacks on Ukrainian forward positions using glide bombs. According to British intelligence, footage from the site of the strike suggests that the drones hit the warehouse with kits for glide bombs, although it is not yet known whether the planes themselves were damaged. Ukraine's ability to disrupt Russian tactical air, particularly glide bomb usage, is key to the wider defense of the front lines, the British intelligence noted. According to the author of the publication, Saturday's strike on the Kushchayovskaya airbase isn't the first time Ukraine has gone after Russian airbases, hosting fighter bombers that can drop glide bombs. In early April, Ukraine staged a huge drone attack on the Morozovsk airbase in Rostov, hundreds of miles inside Russia. While the extent of the damage was ultimately unclear, the attack appeared to underscore Ukraine's desire to stomp out the glide bomb threat before the aircraft could take flight. Experts have warned that Russian glide bombs pose a tremendous threat to Ukrainian forces stated in the material. Confiscated Russian assets will allow Ukraine to finance war until 2028. Ukraine has received a vital military assistance of $61 billion from the United States. However, Kyiv still needs a medium-term financing plan to withstand pressure from Russia, according to Reuters. The central element of the financing plan should be the mobilization of frozen assets of the Moscow Central Bank to compensate for the war damages. Reuters suggests that the American aid package will provide Ukraine with weapons and ammunition until approximately the end of 2025. Therefore, during this period, Ukraine may once again run out of arms. Even if Joe Biden is re-elected as US president this November, he may struggle to get more money out of Congress. And if Donald Trump returns to the White House, American support for Ukraine will be even more precarious given the Republican candidate's previous lack of commitment to Kyiv's defense, the article states. A multi-year financing plan for Ukraine would have several advantages. First and foremost, it would provide some insurance against political fluctuations in the United States. It would also bolster the morale of Ukrainians and give Western arms manufacturers more confidence in expanding production. The main way to get much more money for Ukraine is to mobilize Russian assets frozen by Western countries at the beginning of the war, amounting to approximately $320 billion. If the countries guaranteed interest from the assets for a decade, they might raise 30 to 40 billion euros. While this will help, it will not be a game changer because it will fund Ukraine for less than half a year, the report says. It is emphasized that if Ukraine receives $320 billion, it will be a completely different matter. That would finance the war until at least the end of 2028. If the belligerents ended or froze the conflict before then, Ukraine could use some of the money to rebuild its economy, which the World Bank estimates will cost $486 billion, the material says. Since the start of the full-scale war in Ukraine, Western countries have frozen over $300 billion of Russian assets. So far, they have not been able to confiscate them due to legal and reputational risks. In this regard, the United States and G7 countries are considering several options. Transferring the proceeds from Russian assets to Ukraine to buy weapons, transferring Russian assets to Ukraine as compensation for Russia's invasion, using frozen Russian assets as collateral for loans to Ukraine. Vice President of the European Commission, Valdis Dombrovskis, stated that $300 billion in frozen Russian assets could be used as collateral for lending to Ukraine. Earlier, Reuters reported that the group of seven countries are considering discussing the idea proposed by the United States to confiscate proceeds from Russian assets at the summit scheduled for June.